In recent months we've started to work with Lenovo equipment and this is a non-sponsored video but I wanted to share some of my experiences with VR creation and moving into GPU rendering and what we've experienced with this kind of equipment. We've been working with Lenovo for a good few months now to try and see if this kind of equipment is going to be suitable for our studio. Now we do a lot of VR, we do a lot of um, a lot of uh, creation and modeling assets, and a lot of GPU rendering. So we we've got to find solutions that work for all of those things. Um, what you're seeing now is me using um, a VR piece of software called Gravity Sketch and I'm obviously doing it in VR so this piece of equipment is uh, an Oculus Rift S with touch controllers and the software as I mentioned is Gravity Sketch which is a, a, a VR design tool that you'll find in um, a lot of places like automotive and more and more now in media and entertainment and it's becoming quite a you know it's quite a common well, not common, but it's becoming um, more acceptable to, to do this kind of creation in VR now. Um, there's been a lot of review done in VR for quite some time in, in some of those industries, but you're seeing the creation tools coming along quite, quite well now. The equipment that I'm actually working on is the Lenovo P520 with Xeon, and we've got an RTX 5000 there, which was new for me for, for this um, period of time. And 512 gig with 64 gig of RAM. So it's uh, a very, very nice spec for this kind of work. So we're used to using things like uh, NVIDIA 1080 Ti's and then 2080's. Um, so this is the first time we spent any significant time with an RTX card. And the, the experience is overwhelmingly positive. Now, it's, it's not the cheapest card on the market, but it seems to be, from our experience in, in, in doing this kind of work, is... It's almost bulletproof because we've not had a, any kind of issue whatsoever with, with, with the, the graphics. Now, what I wanted to do with this scenario here was to push it as far as I could. So this, this model didn't actually do that. So Gravity Sketch gives you the ability to do um, some NURBS-based modeling. So you've got some, um, you've got some subdivision modeling happening. You've got some... Um, a wide range of uh, wide range of tools really being used that all use the graphics card. So at the moment, you've just seen sketching and what we call using volumes to to block out what we want to to create. So that might be the equivalent of using alias sketch and or marker pens and just literally thrashing out the initial ideas, the ideation and the the initial forms before we move on to to the next stage, which is pretty much all about modeling, surfacing, um, and getting the actual model into, a, into a, a much more refined form. So these are surfacing tools that I'm using here, and they respond so well on this machinery. So they're, they're actually, um, this isn't a surface, uh, as you would expect in a CAD-based program. This is actually subdivision modeling now. So this was new in Gravity Sketch last year. Um, I was lucky enough to be heavily involved when they were developing this. And for anyone that does know that you know the the, the technology of subdivision modeling is is used in a lot of film and um, a lot a lot of TV, not so much in game because you, you don't subdivide in the same way. And um, so you'll find that higher resolution assets use this kind of technology, and you'll see it in a lot of the bigger animation studios. So you know, obviously Pixar. Um, we're, we're obviously responsible for subdivision modeling in the very early days. Um, Edwin Catmull was was one of the people that developed the algorithms. Now it's heavily graphic in graphically uh, intensive. So when when you're um, rendering this live as you're sculpting, you're you're putting a lot of load on the CPU and on the GPU, and that's what I wanted to see here is how I could create these kind of models and assets more more for concept these aren't finished models like i would create in maya or even in rhino or, or or more mechanical they're more about can we get the shapes and the forms that we want and can it can it deliver uh, at a speed that doesn't slow me down um, and it did it delivered very very well so uh, again i can't speak highly enough about that kind of 
graphics card and this kind of machinery at the moment. Um, we have got um, uh, an RTX 4000 in a laptop um, that we're testing in the same way, but I haven't really spent enough deep time with that yet. Whereas this this piece of machinery now has become quite um, a part of my daily life. So we, we also do a lot of this kind of recording. So we might be working, um, we might be doing what you're seeing me doing on screen. We might be recording that in OBS, Open Broadcast Software, two 4K screens, plus the recording going on, plus the hardware itself, so you've got the headset and all of the feed going to that. So it can be quite graphically intense. Now, I haven't even heard fans spin up on this equipment yet, so it for me it's it's quite different to what I'm, I'm used to. Um, so we, you know we 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 haven't been hampered in any way or haven't been slowed down by by this this, this equipment yet, which is what we were looking for, and we were looking for a solution that would give us that kind of stability. Now, um, in terms of the software, as you can see, uh, I've just I've just done a lot of surfacing, and then once we surface it and we create it like that, we'd send it out for rendering. Now, on this particular example, I chose to use um, Cinema 4D. And I do, I do use quite a few different um, uh, rendering and animation packages. We choose Cinema 4D because a lot of our clients ask us to use it. So especially in broadcast TV, it's a very common piece of software for that. So we, we split our time with Cinema 4D and Maya, uh, mostly. Uh, and, and with Cinema 4D, we use a, a rendering solution called Redshift. Um, and that's, that's obviously heavily graphically intensive. And um, what you can see on screen there now is the uh, render view so that's basically a live render as I'm I'm working on this gravity sketch model now what we get from gravity sketch is is because the models all broken down into um, selection sets th that helps me surface it and quickly um, uh, get it ready to use in the render environment now now it comes out of, of gravity sketch with those sets because we've given what like a material ID to each part, so it's simply a case of dragging and dropping the new redshift materials on, and then setting up the scene for things like shadow catching and all of the the things that I'd want to do in in, in a, a piece like this. You can see me doing that on screen now. Um, and what we do with this with this kind of workflow, this 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 is a. a uh, really a concept workflow we we basically make stuff really really quickly in VR and it helps us make decisions on whether it's the right um, you know if we got the right form the right shape this kind of work is is a couple of hours it's it's not it's not intensive labor intensive modeling it's this is to answer questions for a for a reason so are we designing this ship for a show are we designing it for a 3d print are we do, you know th th there could be a million reasons why we would do this but obviously time is money and for us if we can do it quicker and we can and we can get it to get the answer or the look to the client and then we get the answer back then it's a bonus and that's where the hardware makes a big difference for me um, and a robust workstation is not something that we, we've, we've normally had equipment that's made up from various different sources we don't have a loyalty to a supplier or we didn't have um, and now to you know to be working with this kind of equipment is quite is quite nice for us so everyone will have their opinion on, on the types of hardware but I, I can only speak to what I've I've seen in, in the last few weeks and for a VR to this kind of workflow that you're seeing here it's a very strong uh, setup and um, that amount of RAM is, is more than enough for, for our kind of work and the GPU is fantastic so thumbs up for the machinery and I'm gonna do uh, a lot more of these videos videos.